This is Texans TV. Texans Extra Points is sponsored by BHP and by Reliant, the official energy provider of the Houston Texans, and by your Houston area Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. We are ready to rock in Houston. Touchdown, Houston! Are you kidding? What a catch! Oh, baby! Hello there. Welcome into a bi week edition of Texans Extra Points. My name is Drew Doherty. I'm your host, and I got two of my close friends with me to help today. It's Mark Vanderbilt, voice of the Houston Texans and DP Sidhu of HoustonTexans.com and Texans TV, Texans Radio. I know you're off to the Canary Islands and you're off to Cabo San Lucas. Is that no? Exactly, no? No. You're here. You're, you're local. All right. Live, <laughs> local, and late breaking. And we're going to get into a, a lot of the the stuff that's going on with this team here in just a moment. Well, we start with some news of the week, and that is Texans Quickets. When last we saw Tyrod Taylor, it was a struggle on Sunday in Miami. He had some interceptions. He had some misfires. But the next time he's out there, which will be against Tennessee, according to head coach David Culley, when the Texans resume play in a week, he's going to be okay. Uh, basically, I had to talk about it just to keep him encouraged that, look, you know, you haven't gone through this. You know, this is the first time you've gone through this. Uh, you know, he, he felt like, uh, you know, going into that game that he knew that if he played well, we'd have a chance to win the game. And he didn't. And uh, I just wanted to ensure him that next time around, next time we go, when we go to Tennessee, that uh, it's going to be better. Even though there's no game this Sunday, head coach David Culley said it's a very important week for a variety of reasons. And he detailed just what exactly he's going to do with that extra bit of time. You evaluate everything. I evaluate what I'm doing. I evaluate the message that I'm giving to him. I know the message I'm giving to him is the right message. Is am I giving it to him the right way? As for the players, it's one of those re-weeks. Recharge, re-energize, readjust, refocus. And Brandon Cooks, amongst others, described how he's going to spend the bye week. Hang out with my family and, uh, you know, be with my wife and my son, who's one. Uh, and to be able to get that time with him is going to be huge. You know, I see him a couple hours a day during the week. So to be able to have his time off and spend time with him, uh, that's just going to make me a better man and a better player uh, just because I can come back re-energized. Okay, looking at the big picture, not just what happened last Sunday in Miami, but big picture overall, first half of the season, give or take, what needs to get jiggled offensively for this team to kind of take off and start being a little bit more successful? Well, Drew, you didn't get that bounce you wanted to see when Taylor got back into the lineup. He had never thrown a pick against the Dolphins in six starts. Start seven, he throws three interceptions, and I thought he was out of rhythm. And I think that it's like a pitcher who doesn't have his best stuff. Yeah. He didn't have his best stuff. He was out of rhythm after all those weeks off. Whatever the case may be, he's got to play a lot better, and I think we'll see that next time out with him. Running the ball continues to be a mystery. And I think that with the O-linemen they have out, that's a big problem. That's a big factor here. So if they can get healthier, maybe they won't. But maybe they'll get better up front with more practice time, et cetera, and Taylor being more solid in the lineup. Because we did see some pops in the running game early on against the Dolphins. He's very right. We did see some positive gains there in the run game, but we didn't see enough of them. We didn't see it time after time after time. You know, consistency is that C word that keeps on coming up, DP. Yeah, you know, and Mark mentioned the injuries at the O-line. When Taylor last started, you had a completely different starting yeah. five as you do now. So Taylor has to get back into that rhythm. The offense as a whole needs to quit committing so many penalties. I know that's just been something that we've heard over and over and over again from David Culley. We are sick of hearing about it. He's sick of talking about it. We're sick of seeing it every Sunday. The players are sick of it as well. It's something they need to turn around because it seems like every time they have a big play for a gain, it gets called back because of a flag. And that really is shooting yourself in the foot when you're trying to score in a game that was as close as, say, Miami or some of these other games that they've really been in it even late in the game. they got to quit with the penalties. they got to clean things up. That's a big key when it comes to consistency. Yeah, she brings up a great point. Some teams can get away with 8, 9, 10 penalties a game every once in a while. But this team can't get away with it, and they can't get away with it when they're doing it every single week, Mark. No, you don't have the firepower to overcome right. mistakes. And I know people get tired of hearing Coach Cully saying things about the penalties and the turnovers and everything, but they just don't have what it takes to overcome big mistakes because they're not a big play team. They just haven't been. Opening weekend, they got a couple of big plays. Brandon Cooks with that deep catch off the arm of Tyrod Taylor. And every once in a while, you'll see something, but just not nearly enough, Drew. And I think that 
uh, as we go on here, if they can cut down on some of those mistakes, not turn the ball over, the defense can keep them in some of these games. They have the Jets next home game, November 28th. Seattle gives up a lot of yards on defense. Maybe you can make some hay against these teams because they haven't scored enough touchdowns. To say the least, they haven't scored a touchdown on the road since week two at Cleveland. Yeah, now let's flip the page. There have been some things that we've seen that make you think, well, maybe that guy can be a part of the future. What, what's uh, what's brought you some optimism through this first half of the year? I think early on, especially when everybody was in sync, Tyrod was out there. We saw some big plays with him and Brandon Cooks. We saw a lot of really creative play calling with the misdirections and you know, you, you didn't know what wildcat formation was going to be out there. I thought the creativity that we saw early on was really good. Obviously, they had to pull that back when Tyrod went out and Davis Mills entered the game. So I'm hoping to see more of that as the season progresses, especially after the bye. Tyrod's got a game under his belt. He's got a week to sort of look at what went wrong for him, get back into rhythm, start getting these practice reps that he wasn't getting the whole time he was on IR. And, and I want to see some of that creativity because that connection between him and Brandon Cooks is so good. You definitely want to see more of that. Yeah, with Brandon Cooks, I was asked off air once, you know, earlier in the season. Is he pre he's just a pretty good guy for this regime. I was like, hell, he can play for any regime. It doesn't matter if it's oh. this team, the Patriots of uh, Tom Brady. He can play with anybody. You can put him on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't want him. I, I want to keep yeah, him yeah. here. Keep but, him here. Yeah, he can play with anybody. All right. Speaking of guys who can play with anybody, a couple of them last Sunday in Miami came up with a big play in a sack of Jacoby Brissett. We're talking to Brissett. We're talking about uh, Jordan Jenkins and Malik Collins, and they are profiled here by John Harris in the Telestrator. Welcome to Texas Telestrator, presented by BMW. I am your host, John Harris, football analyst and sideline reporter for your Houston Texans. And the pass rush was really the thing that was working down in Miami against the Miami Dolphins, and it came up at big times. And this is one of those. So let's go to the surface, presented by Microsoft. And you can see right here, ball's at the 30-yard line right there. Jason Sanders, kicker for the Dolphins, can make it from 60. This is about a 47-yard field goal if it stood right here. But it's not going to be that way because the Texas pass rush is going to knock Jacoby Brissett back to a point where the Dolphins are completely out of field goal range, and it forced the Dolphins to punt a play after this. So let's take a look at it, and you're going to see the Texans in their traditional 4-3, kind of, but they're nickel because that's Tavier Thomas. So they got five DBs, one, two, three, four, five, against 11 personnel, I guess depending on how you talk about Gesicki who is right over here. I call him a receiver, so I think it's 11 personnel. A tight end here and a running back. And so the Texans' secondary is going to do a really nice job. Now, it looks like what the Texans have been playing, cover two. Here, there, play flat, play flat, and then a middle runner right here, right? That's what the Texans have been playing. I think we've actually shown that a few times on Telestrator. It looks at first to Jacoby Brissett like cover two. But you can tell, just look at the safeties and the way they're sitting low and how Desmond King opened up. If he were playing cover two or Tampa two, he would have jammed that receiver and prevented that, that release. Instead, Desmond runs. Justin hangs low. The safety does not drop here. And this middle dropper isn't even looking at these two. He's looking at the quarterback himself. So the Texans play a little different coverage back here. Still zone, but they're trying to match up on routes and do a pretty good job. But Jacoby Brissett doesn't even have time to even look at the routes. Why? Well, look at what happens inside. It's a four-man rush, and two guys are all over him. And look where they knock him out, right there at the 45. That's now, if the next play is the fourth down, which the next play they threw for like two yards. So it was gonna be like a 58, 59-yard field goal, all because of this sack. So let's take a look at the rush here from our end zone view. There we go. That's what I like to see here. So you got Jordan Jenkins out here, DeMarcus, and then you got the two inside. We're gonna focus here and here. These two wins. So let's look at Malik. He's gonna go one-on-one -on, -one on Austin Jackson, the second year guy. And he is just gonna club with the right, club with that right hand, get on that shoulder, and look at his feet. Feet already off the ground. Malik's gonna win, you already know it. And then he rips underneath, and he's part of it. So that's one part. Jordan Jenkins 
rocks right through Jesse Davis. Forklifts. Let's go to this forklift right there. See how that arm is coming up? Jordan's forklifting him up in the air. He's going to rip underneath. And then they meet at the quarterback for the big sack. They shared it, but it was excellent job by those two guys on the interior getting to Jacoby Brissett. Going to the bye week, you know, to be able to reset mentally, um, come back refreshed and get going. One of the biggest things I take away is just, you know, the ball security, just taking care of the ball from an offense standpoint and defense continuing to get those turnovers. And one big thing I think we can do better coming back is just playing complimentary football. We haven't had a game yet where all three phases were on the same page, playing at a high level. It's kind of been one here, one there. If we can come back and all do that, um, that'll give us a great shot to be able to win some games. Wide receiver Brandon Cooks, who we just were talking about before we went to break. It's Drew, it's Mark, it's Deepy. This is Texans 360 coming at you from the Ford Studios. And defensively, uh, it's been a struggle like the rest of the team. But at the back end, they have had their problems, I think, more so than the front seven, especially mm -hmm. the defensive line. It's actually been a strength of this ball club, I would say, through the first half of the season. Yay, nay, huh? Absolutely a yeah. strength. I mean, wouldn't you agree, DP? Yeah. You, you have these guys, and you have players who you could have around here for a while. Yeah. Homegrown guys like John Grenard, Ross Blacklock, Roy Lopez, homegrown in the sense that you drafted these players, and I want to see them stay Houston Texans and continue to build around them up front. Jacob Martin flashing. You know, Whitney's gone and everything, but they're still getting some work up front. Malik Collins, you talked about him. You know, we'll see what happens, the contractual situations being what they are, but that's why I highlight the guys who they have control of, contractual control, heading into the offseason, because I'm looking forward to seeing what a guy like John Bernard can do in his career, entering year three next year, and of course the rest of this season, because you'll have some opportunities to make some plays. In the contractual stuff, Mark's talking about there are many guys on one-year deals. There's not yeah. contract squabbles going on no. right now. Just in case, I knew you knew, I knew what you meant, but just in case, you know, yeah, that's what we're doing, I'm explaining. Uh, DP. What do you think about the back end? I mean, there have been some times where Justin Reed's come up with a, a, a takeaway and they pop the ball loose. Terrence Mitchell seems to get his hand on a ball and force a fumble just about every game. But they've been exposed at times, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, Justin Reed talked about it. He said it's been a roller coaster for the secondary. I mean, they've been dealing with injuries. Vernon Hargraves gets released. They've had a lot of substitutions back there. They're still trying to find that right formula and the right chemistry. And I think that's been a big issue with the back end. I mean. Communication's been key, and it's hard to develop a good line of communication when the players keep changing. So I thought against Miami, they did eliminate some of the big plays. Tackling was better, so we saw some improvement back there. You hope to see them be able to build on that, but yeah, it's certainly been a roller coaster for the back end. Really, and it's just been because injuries, substitutions, they're still trying to find that right mix of guys. Hopefully they have it now, and they can keep these guys moving forward here for the second half. We had a fun moment before the last game where a, a viewer asked on the pregame show, hey, do you think the Texans can get some takeaways today? And boy, howdy, they did. They got five of them. They came up with them. They have zoomed past last year's total of nine takeaways on the entire season. That's one thing that this Lovey Smith defense has been able to do. And as these kind of weaker, quote-unquote, teams are coming up on the schedule, that should be something that could continue. I'm not saying five every time, mm. but if you can get a, a turnover differential of plus two as opposed to just plus one, you should win ball games. It's a sad story because the way the offense is performing or is not performing is really affecting the defense. You know, I think this defense is good enough to have a winning football team or at least a winning effort every Sunday. And guys are putting out the effort, but one side of the ball is not doing what they want to do. Defense. Very often they do what they want to do, get pressure on the quarterback without sending extra people, which is impressive, and they're getting the takeaways. And this is something we talked about during OTAs. You know, we saw them early on in OTAs doing these drills. It's a Lovey Smith thing. He really preaches it, and they're flourishing in that area. So that is super cool to see. You want to see more of that. Maybe they can get some good chances for the offense. Okay, please hold your remarks. Do not answer them aloud. Maybe use your, your pencils for your Scantron answers. But we got some Texans trivia for you. Four rookies have started a game this season for the Houston Texans. Name them. We'll have the answer later on. You're on Texans Extra Points.
man, it's a beautiful day to play some ball, man. I'll tell you that, boy. It's a beautiful day to play some football. Miami vibes, let's go. My own mama got to see this, boy. She love Miami. She should have came. Hey, man, hey, go out there, protect your brother, do your job, and do your assignment, bro. Play your best today. Texas on three. One, two, three. Texas. Let's go, baby. You up. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Now. Let's go, man. Hand off, Gaskin looking for room up the middle, and he's brought down across the 20-yard line. Good to see Ross Blacklock back in there. Brissett shotgun, one back. Here's the snap to Jacoby Brissett looking around. Throws over the middle, tipped, and this is intercepted. Hey! Texans have it at the 44-yard line. <laughs> Houston gets its fourth takeaway of the day. Off the deflection, the Texans take it back. Yeah! Yeah, let's go! Yes, Lord. Best hands in the feet. Woo. You know what I'm saying? Do it in practice. Do it in the game. Practice made perfect. Best in the nation. Best in the nation. Hey, let's keep going, bro. Another level. Another level, bro. Let's go. Another level. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Brissett, shotgun, draw play. Ahmed, and he's swallowed up by Hewitt and company. And Big Ross Blacklock gets up off the bottom of the pile, helped up by Roy Lopez. Those are two good young players that you look forward to having around for a while. Blacklock, Roy Lopez, you have John Grenard. All right, did our thing today, Bato. Good game, little boy. It was wired for sound, Ross Blacklock was. This is Texans Extra Points. It's Drew Doherty, D.P. Sidhu, and Mark Vandermeer, voice of the Houston Texans. We've got some players to watch mm -hmm. for the second half of the season, and that intro there is perfect because you've got Ross Blacklock as your guy, don't yeah, you? Yeah, this is my guy because I want to see that D-line continue to play well together to wreak havoc in the backfield, to stop the run like they did against the Dolphins. Blacklock with the tip pass. Look, this is a player you drafted last year. Last year is kind of a mulligan year. This year you're seeing what kind of player he could truly be, and I think it's only going to get better from here. He's my guy. All right, DP, who do you have as what? your PTW? One of the four rookies that had a start this year, <laughs> Nico Collins. I mean, I feel like we've seen him get better and better ever since he came back off of IR, and as he gains the trust of these quarterbacks, I do want to see some explosive plays. He had that big 32-yard catch against Cleveland with Tyrod. So I want to see him in the second half of the season. I want to see what he's able to do. And, and maybe he can take some of that pressure off of Brandon Cooks, who is going to see a lot of attention from defenses. I'm with you. I like Nico Collins. I've said it a few times. He's like a big-bodied Gumby. And I mean that in a complimentary <laughs> way. I don't mean that in a uh, I didn't say derogatory way. <laughs> As for me, I'm going to go with Jonathan Grenard. He leads his team in sacks. He's in the top 10 in the NFL leaderboard in sacks. Jonathan Grenard is certainly another one of those guys, we've talked about a few of them throughout the show, a building block for the future, right. definitely on the defense and really on this team as a whole. Okay, don't you move a muscle. We've got to get to keys to the second half of the season. We're going to do that when Texans Extra Points returns in a moment. Texans Extra Points has been sponsored by BHP, by Reliant, the official energy provider of the Houston Texans, and by Cigna, together all the way. All right, earlier in the show for Texans Trivia, we asked you which four Texans draft picks have started so far in 2021. So which rookie draft picks for the Texans have started? You gave away Nico Collins earlier. What are some of the other three? Well, Davis Mills, yeah. obviously. Roy Lopez, Boom. Big Roy. Salsa. And there's the yeah. fourth is... Brevin Jordan. Brevin Jordan. He did get a start. Mm -hmm. Good call. That's four of them. Four guys that we uh, will want to see more of here in the second half of the season. Okay, time for our Ticketmaster keys to the game. It's normally keys to the game. For now, it's going to be keys of the second half of the year. We're going to start with you. Who are your uh, What are your keys? I mean, you got to play with some more consistency. You know, they sometimes they'll do things better in a game. They'll protect the football. The Texans will, and then the next game, you see four or five turnovers. So play with a little bit more consistency on the positive side. Mm -hmm. And then you know, like in Men in Black, that device they put in front of your face of course, and they delete. I, I would like to delete the first nine games of the season from these players' minds. I mean, it's start fresh. You know, it's it's 0-0 after the bye week, and just take it from there. You know, don't let what you did 
poorly in the first half of the season, bog you down for the rest of the season. I'd like that device for some of my first few years out of college, some <laughs> of the choices I made from back then. But uh, how about you, Mark? She gave us our keys. What I feel yours? like my college years were that device. <laughs> anyway, uh, look, I hate to go Adrian and Rocky too, but win. Win. Right. Win some games here. Look, you're playing the Titans. You don't think you can beat them? They lost to the Jets. Anything is possible. The Jags beat the Bills, who beat you by 40, but you beat the Jags. So anything's possible. And then you have the Jets after that. So anything can happen in this league. Make it happen by playing more consistently, by finding a way to cut down on some of the penalties and turnovers on offense, maybe run the ball, get Tyrod healthier. And if Mills comes back into the lineup, that too, he can learn while being on the bench and he can take his game up a notch. Everybody in this league has to get better, including Mills, including everybody. So let's see if they can improve some in the second half and win some of these games. Both good ones. I'm going to be boring Barney, though, and I'm going to go with average four yards a carry on the ground. They haven't done that. They've not done that. I mean, wow. get over four yards a carry when you're running the football. I think that could go a long way. And then conversely, let's get some big pops per game. I mean, we got to get some big plays, you know, some 25, 30 yard chunk plays down the field. And then as a little extra flourish, how about a blocked punt or two, a return for, for a touchdown, a game or two down the second half of the season. I'd like to see that. I know you guys would like to see that. Sure. We put all that together. That's going to be a nice yummy gumbo for the second half of 2021 for the Texans. Mark, DP, thanks so much. Hey, we have fun when we're here on game day. It's the highlight of our job. So come on out and watch a game here at NRG Stadium. Just go to HoustonTexans.com slash tickets and come experience game day together. It's a fun time. All right, we appreciate you watching. We hope you're having a great week off, and we can't wait to do it again with you next week. Texans going to Nashville to take on those Titans. So for Tyler Marcotte and the rest, I'm Drew. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.